Recently, we spoke of the hub style bedding designs and how they play such a intricate role in your uh, parcel, especially uh, smaller the parcel, the greater the power that having a hub style design can really be. Today, what we're gonna talk about is we're gonna go a little bit in depth here further and talk about structure and how to really make the, the structure or the format of, of a uh, hub style bedding area, things that you can do to add to that other than like we had talked about before uh, hinge cutting directional hinge cutting today we're going to talk about other structure that ties to the uh, the aid of whitetail habitat now there's a lot of different beliefs out there we've talked about um, we've talked about many times about um, the myth if you will some folks belief uh, my uh, on hinge cutting my belief is that a high hinge cut is not at all productive. Now, there there are some folks out there that'll tell you that uh, you know the deer uh, prefer a canopy. Well, that may be. I'm not here to tell you that you know deer won't bed underneath uh, certain areas in hinge cutting. Um, if I told you that, I'd be lying to you because obviously that's probably something that has happened out there in the in the country. Maybe they don't have any other canopy. Maybe they don't have any other structure above that. That's what they're seeking. So it's not that it won't happen. Uh, what I speak of here is the majority. So the majority of the time, what I find on client properties and my own property is they, they will not, they, they do not prefer uh, that, that canopy. One of the reasons is, is like we've talked about before, one of the reasons is, is when you're building these, now a dome bedding area obviously is, is something different than uh, a buck bedding area. But as far as uh, you know, velvet structure, making sure that they you know they're not uh, banging up their horns in and out of these bedding areas, that's got to do with high hinge cuts. The biggest thing for me, guys, is is to promote. If you're going to take uh, take the time to hinge cut and use hinge cutting to aid your property, my responsibility is is to bring you that information so you can get the most production. Uh, the most pr profitability out of that area and high hinge cuts are not the answer uh, low hinge cuts waist high um, three to four foot tall is what I recommend one it's way safer like we've always talked about two it's really the we, we drew the, the diagram here on the bottom of the uh, of the hub style design uh, in a in a past video that you can uh, look up um, just a week or so ago and you know that keeps that percentage of the tree, the most of the percentage on the trees at reachable heights for the deer. Um, it then it becomes not only reachable, it becomes side cover. And um, in a lot of areas of the country, especially, I mean, we are here, I've got, uh, you know, a foot of snow on the, on the ground right now. We are in the state of Michigan. That's where uh, I'm based out of, I travel the country from here. And if there's anywhere in the country that you would think that, that a deer needs shelter from above would be in areas of the country that are that have a heavy snow load and they don't they don't need it here it's all focused on the majority is focused on side cover now how do we advance the side cover is the topic today so by hinge cutting in these areas you are going to let that uh, sunlight to the forest floor now uh, and, and that's going to uh, spark a regeneration of not only poplar, it's going to also regenerate uh, depending on where you're at and what is there that you're removing, you know, what that root base is. You might, it might be hardwood regeneration through maple, cherry, uh, and, and hopefully some oak. Any of that hardwood browse is what you're trying to put internal of these bedding areas because like we said, guys, I've said it a hundred times and I'll say it again, I'll say it again, I'll say it a hundred times, whatever the old theory is there. Uh, this is that bedding area is only as strong as as the uh, food within it and also that food plot is only as strong as the habitat or the or the food or the uh, bedding area that backs it so all this conjoins together your food plot is a huge portion of this but that's why we did this like we said in process you already have your design of your food plots where they need to be so you know you can get around them now you're focusing the you're going interior of the property and you're putting these bedding areas off adjacent to the food and now you're you need to understand a little bit further about what 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 you can really do to promote that that bedding area so 
Today we are going to talk about, we're going to touch on, we're going to use the same diagram here, but we're going to go back in and I'm going to show you a couple things that I highly recommend that, uh, that you take a peek at that you can do to advance that bedding area. And this goes for doe bedding areas and also buck bedding areas. We're going to stage into the buck bedding situation of this in the, in the next video, but today we're going to talk about how to enhance that and, and gain more side cover and uh, more, gain more usable square footage within these hub style bedding areas. First thing we're going to talk about, guys, is a lot of the, the lot of the time, um, a lot of times when you're cutting in these, one of the topics that arises is, you know, that sounds great. This design sounds really great, and I think it really resonates with a lot of folks. Once you see it, see it on on a board, hear me talk about it, it really connects with folks when you see it implemented. But this is a situation where you just don't go in like a normal tornado uh, uh, bedding area and you just don't start cutting trees. You have to have a process that makes that, you know, folks always ask me, makes that process easier. So folks always ask me, you know, how in the world do you, do you lay it out and you, do you know that you can tip trees? Obviously trees are leaning, trees are, you know, they don't ever go in the direction that you want them. Um, and it all, it all looks cool on the board, right? But if you can't get it on the ground, it isn't really functional. And here's how I cure that. So one of the things that we do, guys, is we're going to draw this here down below. But one of the things that I do is, is taking this hub style design, we're going to transfer that down here. And I um, hope I'm out of the camera here so you guys can see this. But what I'm going to do is, is we go in and you find your food source, okay? This is just the long linear plot. And uh, we're going to write food on here. I'm just transferring this down from above so we can talk about it in stages here. When you start doing these designs, the first thing that I do as far as these hub style designs is I always draw out a center line. You want three points of impact on your food plot or your destination feed location, your ag field or whatever that is. You want three points of entry, the center being the center of the hub. So what I always do is I always go out onto the food plot and I hang, uh, usually it's done with ribbons. I go out on the food plot, something that you can see from a, from a distance. I go out here and I hang three ribbons on the food plot. What that does is that indicates my entrances out into the food plot, or the exits, the entrances and the exits, the, uh, the, the, the uh, points that you're impacting the food plot. I always go out there and set those first. Then you'll hear me reference this as you mark out the center line. Now the center line is, is exactly that. I, I don't use paint because obviously I just don't like the orange scattered mess that paint uh, that does. What I use is, we're gonna talk about these, but this is what I use right here, guys, is uh, these can be bought um, in, these are packs of 50, I believe. Um, I think they're 50. Uh, but they, they are, these are, um, are, are the flags. And they, you know, obviously they have a pretty good flag on the top of them. I mark the center lines out with these. And the reason is these stay right on your property. So as we're designing these guys, when I leave, all this stuff's done. So when you go back in to do that, you can follow not only the design, but you can follow the flags. So I've got, obviously I've got a, you know, half a truckload of those things that go around with me. Um, and, and also the, the uh, flagging here while we're doing this, I might as well just, you know, I keep all my, my flagging in here. Each one of these flags obviously has a different uh, meaning has a different uh, you know a different color has a different meaning for the different project but what I do guys is I go out on this the edge here and I create those three points of, of uh, entrances into the plot then what I go down is I, I go in and I create my center lines now by doing that I go in and I create the the first V or the first two center lines now I get a question all the time what uh, you know how long are they? And that all depends on your food plot. I mean, if you have the food plot, and then if we were to lay this down, you have your food plot, and then your, your ridge system, you know, dips right off if your food is high, and your ridge system dips off. Now, you might have, you know, 20 yards of this, you might have 50 yards of this, and then you might have to put a bench in there to kind of um, divert or um, stack those in, layer, whatever that term, term is that you want to use, uh, down that ridge system. Or if it's flat, if you're doing this on, uh, which probably more so of these are done on the flat than they are, but you can do this on ridge systems as well. But that you know, you lay this out, and uh, it just depends on how big the food plot is. Bigger the food plot, obviously, the bigger the hub. 
back to the drawing board board here is this here is, is, is actually shown the design here is actually shown out so these corridors are cut open so these 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 uh, areas here these these uh, corridors are like I had you know put up here they're three I've got it wrote right there they're three to five uh, feet wide that is your corridor that's not the transition area that are sometimes ten uh, you know five to ten yards wide we're talking three to five feet wide. It's a very small um, pathway trail system that you're trying to create, but you don't want to get it any tighter than three feet because you have to, in the future, you have to be able to walk down it. You have to maintain it. You want the deer to feel free, and that's their exit routes um, if, if uh, danger you know exists. Uh, so center lines, we go through and we lay these out. How I do the center lines? I take these ribbons and I walk that path as I'm studying the trees. So this center line might not be exactly straight. This center line might come down here. Let's say there's a, there's, we're just going to put some trees in here, some, you know, some mature trees or even, or even uh, undesirables or desirable trees. You know, we're going to bring this down here and you just weave your way through these, through these trees. You know, that, that uh, center line might look like that. It's, this is, you know, just a, a direct line so you guys can see. Uh, exactly how that lays out but this center line might might that corridor might end up you know twisting and if it does that's fine because it's not you know they don't like that complete straight line uh, but yeah so th this comes down you know and then this becomes a corridor that's three let's say three to five feet wide by doing that as you're walking it you're studying the canopy you're studying the trees above you and you know what trees need to go because like we said all of these trees that being the, the stump all these trees need to come to the outside is what we're trying to create you know and then this one, obviously, we do the same thing. We bring this down, and this might, you know, twist in and out of a, of, a, of some trees as well. They don't have to be straight. That's a question that I get a lot. They don't have to be, uh, you know, right. Um, they don't have to be uh, perfect as a uh, an arrow. And, and if they're to tell you the truth, um, I try not to make them perfectly straight. So, uh, so you, yeah. And then you, you know, just like I said, knowing that you're going to tip all these trees to the outside, you're going to make sure, obviously, that that doesn't, you know cross the you're, you're going to make sure that that doesn't cross the, the transition area or the corridor i'm sorry you're going to tip these to the inside you're going to have you're going to be you know leaving these pockets open making sure that you don't uh you know these squiggly lines are obviously the top of the trees guys uh sorry about my drawings here but you know so you're you're opening these these center lines up and then what we do is we come through before these are cut you know before we do any cutting it's laid out so, you know, you, then you come out here to the plot and you connect these, you connect these, this arch that's ever so important. And why is the arch, why is the arch uh, important? Be the arch in this design, as far as the, uh, as far as the um, arch of your, through your hub style um, design is very important because it gives that uh, dimension or that internal dimension of the cubicle. So now you have, obviously you have your there, and like I said before, I even implemented any of these trees down, I should have drew this. So that's, you know, just note to self that you wanna, your, your goal is, is to create this hub, hub and have this all laid out before any of the trees are, are cut. So once you, once you lay this out, now your corridors are open and your corridors are ribboned off. Now you can go back in here where these trees are. Then this tree, if it's going to go across the, uh, if it's gonna, if there's no way, because these cubicles are pretty small in here, and if these trees are gonna extend over the top of the, the top of these, uh, these uh, transition or, or these corridors, you know, here we're gonna draw this out just so, you know, this is your corridor and you've got a tree here and this this uh, tree is going to extend when it's down is going to extend over the top you have two options one if that's not uh, a crucial crucial tree if you can't physically change that with a habitat hook or directional uh, if it's just not going to go that way and you can't lay it down here uh, you know properly lay it right down along, along the edge so it doesn't go over then you have to cut the cut it out what i recommend doing though is that just the, if, if you see one of those happening, make sure that your hinge cut on that tree is lower to the ground so more of this trunk is us usable. And then the top here, obviously, on the other side of it, just becomes structure. 
at that point. Um, it's not something that I try to do at all, but I know, I, I mean, I'm obviously telling you that when you cut these trees, they're not all going to go where you want them to go. Um, so that's kind of how you lay it out. So we, we set the center lines, we draw it all out, we flag it out before you do any cutting at all, and you make it make sense. So, you know, like I said, to answer that question, yes, it takes longer than just going in and hinge cutting an area, but it's well worth it. This arch in here, guys, is is a exit route for them to get out of uh, harm's way. It's a, it's a, that arch promotes um, individual uh, cubicles or these bedding areas, they're these individual bedding areas, these bedrooms that I talk about inside of that design. And it's a very powerful tool. When you don't create this arch in here, you get very sporadic random bedding. And the more that that looks like a tornado in interior of that bedding area, the more uh, does or bedding in general that you're going to get around the outside of this, which takes from your, and a small parcel, the idea is here is to jam as many deer in this, in this hub as you possibly can with the focus, their, with their focus of attention in the right areas. And then when this all gets, you know, uh, regenerates and it's thick, it's a very secluded, it's a very tight, very secluded area. When it's too, when it's, the tornado effect when there's trees just tipped everywhere, what happens is, is your doe bedding area is going to start, you're going to have random deer just bedding all, all over out through here. What happens with that is on a small parcel, guys, every time that they're out just randomly scattered around a bedding area is a high, high chance that you're going to get, going to get busted when you start hunting these transition areas that are in stand locations, you know, where this comes down and your stand location is here you're going to get busted if these deer aren't focused in here in this ring, if you will, this box here is not thick and, and well, um, and we're going to talk about one way to, to really to tighten that up a little bit. Uh, if, if that's not done that way, you're going to get random beds all the way around this thing. And it's, it, and that's when you start getting busted. Now, I mean, can you, you know, guarantee that there's not going to be any deer bedded? No, because there's always going to be a, a natural God given tree that, you know, falls down somewhere that's got structure that you might get a deer behind or whatever. I'm not saying that all the deer, if you create these, all the deer in the world are going to bed in them, but the majority of the deer, that's where you're trying to focus their attention, especially focus the attention of the drama filled doe. So this is uh, so that's kind of an idea guys. I hope that makes sense. Um, one thing that we will touch on is inside of those um, areas, you know, one of the other questions I get is, what do I do with um, what do I do with oak trees in there? Do you cut everything just because it's a tree inside of those bedding areas or in the, inside of these cubicles? Um, just because it's a uh, in, you know an oak tree, do you cut it down? Do you leave it? The rule of thumb is this: as I go through, usually in these in these hubs, I can honestly tell you, probably on an average, that there's probably four to six four four on larger, uh, two on smaller producing, high producing, uh, good producing um, oak trees. And if you're in an area that doesn't have oaks, then obviously um, your, your uh, browse is way, way better obviously on the ground than it is, uh, you know, leaving any of that standing uh, because there's no value to that, you know, dropping acorns. If they're not oaks, they're not getting any that uh, mass crop, mass crop. So uh, there's no sense in leaving it there. So if there's no oaks, put it all on the ground. If there is oaks, select oaks within that, that, that may be kind of stunted looking because it's not getting the canopy that it, it needs to. Um, uh, you do not want to promote too many oaks in that area as far as that heavy acorn mass crop. If you do, one, it's gonna totally shut, shut off, um, it's gonna totally shut off the daylight and you're not gonna get the regeneration that we're want, wanting in here even off your hinge, hinge trees. Um, and also you don't want too much of that mass crop inside of those bedding areas because it uh, obviously when, when pressure kicks in, um, you're fighting that pressure battle and it just makes deer, it can make deer uh, more nocturnal. I highly recommend going into the, uh, into that area and flush cutting any of those larger trees out there. You can use those, um, you can use those blocks of those bigger trees that are, aren't going to, the bigger trees guys, they're, it's very, very difficult to hinge. Um, the larger the tree, 
uh, the more um, crucial it is to keep more of a cambium layer alive to support that massive tree that you have when it's standing. You know, you, you have that whole health of that tree. When it's tipped over, you have a small amount of cambium layer that feeds the tree. Larger trees, it's harder to keep them alive. Um, can you hinge it? Can you just let it, you know, fall? Yes, you can. You're just adding to structure. So those are the trees that you want to make sure um, that, you know, you, you're taking them out. The larger the tree, if you're leaving larger trees, one of the mistakes I see is if you're leaving larger trees inside of any bedding area, but especially the hub style bedding areas, it really cuts the, the uh, leaving those larger trees with that canopy really cuts down on the uh, undergrowth and that's, it's totally defeating what you're trying to do here. So, so how do we go in and, and advance this as far as side cover? The last topic that we're going to talk about is a very important topic here. How do we go through here? And what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to use this as I'm going to use this same uh, design here. And we're just going to, uh, we are going to implement, we are going to implement conifer. Conifer in, inside of a bedding area, once you get it established, now obviously you don't want to plant these and then hinge cut so you're not crushing your trees. You want to be able to get this all done. You want to set the center line and you want to trim everything out. You want to make sure all of the trees are directional hinge cut and it's all finished. Then what you do is you can go back in and you can really promote these uh, off, off, from these, uh, off from these corridors here. You can promote trails into the insides here, you know, all the way, all the way around this. You can go through and promote openings internal of this, uh, you know, little trail systems, if you will, inside. What you're going to do with those is you're going to, you know, carve this out. In other words, this is just a, it's a pocket that goes up in here with a uh, kind of an open area. What you're doing is you're, you're going in here and you're making sure that there's no brush around that area and you're making it a very uh, kind of addressed plot, if you will, all the way around that. What, you, what you're going to do in those areas is you're going to take uh, the conifers and you're going to place, I, I like spruce, um, red cedar is another uh, great thing to use inside of these. Um, that's not food value. What you're creating is you're creating something low side cover. I know a lot of folks will um, out in uh, if you're implementing one of these out in the uh, in, in an old uh, pasture, uh, switchgrass areas, you can use the white pine. When that white pine matures up to six, seven feet tall, ten foot tall, then you cut the top of it out, and that white pine just keeps growing out. That is kind of the, the canopy theory, but it's not. Uh, I, I prefer the the spruce and anything you know, not jack pine or not red pine because that's tall. I want something with a big bottom that you can uh, obviously use some of that structure for wind blocks. So how do we do that? So interior of these, we're going to go in and we're going to plant, you know, two, possibly three, and I like to call them, or I like to call it that triangle effect, and I'll show you why. So taking this right here, we're going to bring this down, uh, and we're going to expose this a little bit. So you have your corridor that comes down. And uh, off the one side of the corridor, you're going to take the saw in to the inside here. So you have, you know, you have your, your trees all the way down around it. Uh, you're going to go in here and you're going to open that little pocket up at the end of it. We're going to expand this a little bit so you can see it. We're going to go in here and you're going to open this pocket up at the end of it and then come back out. So keep in mind, you've got, you've got hinged trees that, you know, this one's coming in from the other. You've got hinged trees all the way around this. Uh, that are leading in, you know, that kind of surround this this area, and you want to make sure that that's just a nice pocket in there. So now they have they have uh, that side protection from all the way uh, around it. Now we're adding, now we're implementing the the spruce. So what I do is with those guys is I just go through and I put the spruce. Probably if you have enough area, you know, you you, you can do that six feet. Uh, we put two or three of those in here. Smaller, obviously smaller the hub the less you know we put in here. Sometimes it's just one. I put those spruce trees right in the center of those open areas. Now, these open areas, I cut them, I cut them out about, you know, so they're about 10 to, uh, to 15, you know, feet wide. Make sure that, you know, and there, could, there could be some sticks and stuff down in there, guys. It doesn't have to be a clean slate. You know, it's not like you're taking the rake in there and making sure there's, everything's polished. But inside of that, you know, you can put that right, right uh, in the center. Um, so any, any, the reason that I put them in the center sometimes is any of the wind direction, they can just, 
if the deer come in here, let's say it's a north uh, a northeast wind, you know, when they when they come in and out of this bedding area, they come back from food in the morning, they come in here, they're going to go in and they can work themselves around with the side cover anywhere around this area and create their beds depending on which way the wind is. It's kind of a, it's a diversion, it's a wind diversion um, inside of there. Now, some guys don't like it in the center of that. Um, I, depending on, you know, kind of how it lays out, I find myself, you know, maybe, uh, you know, kind of fitting that per the area. If it's too tight and you can't get that 10 foot circle made, then what I'll do is I'll put that, you know, I'll put that uh, spruce uh, right on the edge of it there. And it just creates a, anything in there. So when that tree matures, it creates a, a block. It creates a wind block. So by doing that, guys, like I said, these hub style designs, you're focusing the attention. You're making it very attractive. You're adding in, you're able to add in all these ingredients that make the, uh, make habitat improvement fun and make, make these functional. If you don't have a rhyme or a reason to a bedding area, you don't have the capability of, of implementing this stuff or seeing the benefit of these.